How you doing guys and gals? It's Doug Wilson from Yellow Hawk Custom Outdoors. Uh, we're here at the uh, 2016 Fall Yellow Hawk Custom Outdoors Rendezvous. I thought I'd shoot a video on the common tinder sources that are readily available in all seasons here in the eastern woodlands. Now, keep in mind, the ones I'm getting ready to show you are, are pretty common in this area of the eastern woodlands, and they probably are in other areas of the eastern woodlands, as well as the rest of the United States and the world. Some of these plants can be, can be found out west, some of them can't, but I'm gonna show you five or six of them that are pretty common wherever you go, okay? Especially in the eastern woodlands. So we're gonna start with tulip poplar bark, okay? Now this bark here, it's okay, it's okay. This bark here is the tulip poplar bark, and it comes from this tree right here, okay? This is a dead standing piece of tulip poplar that's at the right stage of decomposition to take the bark. And here it is right here. This is, this is how it works. It peels right off the tree. And this is what you need. Now what I suggest you do with tulip poplar bark is, if, you, if it will allow you to do it, you want to take the bark part off and you want to end up with this stringy stuff. Okay, so here's the stringy stuff right here. Okay, this is unprocessed tulip poplar bark. This is a little processed. This is not processed at all. And I've taken pretty much all the bark off of this. Now the important thing to realize about poplar bark is you have to find it at the right state of decomposition. If it's too old and too uh, weathered, when you go to process it, it's gonna crumble into dust and you're not gonna have much. So you gotta get it to where the fibers are still pretty strong and you can't pull them apart readily. I mean, you can do it, but not readily, okay? So, let me grab this, oops, okay. So this is tulip poplar bark. Here's what it looks like when I'm starting to take the bark off of it, okay? It, some of it peels off easy, some of it doesn't. You just have to practice with it. Here is a pile of processed tulip poplar bark, right here. And basically you just process it by pulling it apart, rubbing it in your hands, pulling it apart, until it becomes like a ball of cotton, right? So there's that. The next tinder source is fatwood. You can find this in the eastern woodlands. It's a little more difficult to find than tulip poplar bark. Tulip poplar bark is my go-to tinder source for the eastern woodlands. If I can find fatwood, this is what I'll use first. You can see that deep orange color <clears throat> of all the sap that's impregnated into this wood. And this is, this is the wood that they say has terpene in it. Terpene is um, a byproduct of the sap that is impregnated into the wood. And we make turpentine out of terp terpene. So that's the flammable part of fat wood. And it's real easy to recognize. It doesn't have that white color that pine has. This is pine, white pine. It has this orange looking color here. And it looks almost like it's wet. That's what you're looking for. This is fat wood. And it's no, there's no denying the smell. You smell it, it smells like turpentine. Okay, so that's fat wood. Um, the, the finding of this, the harvesting of this stuff, will come in another video when I can find a stump or a tree or whatever that has some fat wood in it. Then I'll do a video on how to harvest it. Um, the next one in this area is eh, yellow birch. This is yellow birch bark right here. This has been taken off the tree and it's not the actual bark you want. It's these little wispy things that you can peel off of it. That's what you want. 
So basically what I have here is I have a whole pile of those wispy shavings that come right off the outer portion of the bark. It's, it's called yellow birch because this bark is actually yellow. It's a golden yellow color. So that's, that's that. Then we have river birch in this area. River birch comes off like sheets of paper. This is river birch right here. And basically what you have to do with this stuff is you have to crumple it up real good and then hit it with a ferro rod. All this stuff, if processed correctly, will take a spark from a ferro rod if it's processed correctly. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to show you the end processed product of each one of these tinders. All right, I got one more to show you. Hold on. This stuff here is called grapevine. Grapevine bark. Comes off in big strips off of the grapevines. Um, and this works more like a fire extender. So once you get your pile of uh, tulip poplar bark lit or your pile of fatwood lit or whatever, you can put this on it as a fire extender, which gives you more time to put the bigger stuff on. That's readily available in the eastern woodlands, uh, grapevine bark. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how easy it is to process each one of these things. And I'll begin with the fat wood. All right. What I like to do with fat wood, the most effective way for me is by making Maya dust. And this is how you do it. Take the good sharp 90 degree spine of your knife and rub it down the wood until you have that. That will go up with a ferro rod, no problem at all, even if it's wet. I do it when it's wet a lot, just to show people that it can be done. All right, so that's fat wood. The yellow birch, all you have to do is pick it off the tree and make a pile and break it up a little bit. That's the yellow birch. The tulip poplar bark, I showed you how to process that. And the river birch, I showed you how to crumple it up and process that. So now we're going to light each one of these piles to show you how it works. I've got uh, one of David Brown's trusty, dusty uh, antler ferro rod rigs. And the best striker I've ever used on a ferro rod is these little green ones. You can get them for me. I'll give it to you for free. You have to use the side with the burr though. The reason why people think these are cheap and that they don't work is because they're not using them right. There's only one edge that you can strike on this, fer on this striker and that's the edge with the burr. It's usually on the shorter edge of the actual striker. So, very, very efficient. So here's we're going to start with the uh, Maya dust. We're going to start with the, the Maya dust. Okay? Real easy. Put your fair rod at the base. Alright? There's that. Now I'm just going to push them off onto the ground. And that was another pile of feathers that just lit right away. I'm going to push them onto the ground. I'm going to stamp them out so I don't start a fire. Okay? You saw how easy that was to do. Uh, fat wood's very effective, very effective. All right, the next one we're going to do is the yellow birch bark. Okay, I'm going to put the pile here. This one's a little more difficult, but it can be done. There it is. Okay, that's yellow birch. And you can see the essential oils of the birch tree smoke, you know, black smoke. Okay, so I'm going to push this one off so I don't start a fire. That one. Okay, the next one I'm going to show you is the tulip poplar bark. This is all processed down like cotton. I showed you how to do that. It's real simple. This stuff goes up real effective. Okay, there it is. No problem at all. This will give you a couple of minutes to get your big stuff on it. Now, with a fire lay, you have to have everything ready before you start your tinder bundle. Okay? There's that one. 
onto the ground it goes. The next one is the river birch. Sometimes this can be difficult to get lit. You have to process it down so there's a lot of surface area. All right, there it is. Boom. This stuff burns real well. Real well. And it'll burn to give you time to put your tall your your uh, your tinder and whatnot on your your kindling that you have your wood, right? Okay, guys. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Here's a cool spoon I've been working on. <laughs> I'm not much of a spoon carver, but it's working out okay. So this is Doug Wilson, the Yellow Hawk Customs Outdoors, on the 2016 Fall Rendezvous. See you on the next video. Thank you.